Hey everyone, welcome to From the Depths. I'm Menti and this is episode 12 of the Black Sun Syndicate Squadron Shootout. In this episode we've got the Coastal Task Force Juliet by Bean. Seems to have uh, this airship here covered in a bunch of uh, advanced cannons. Some external props. Got the, uh, the main ship here. Some missiles in the front, and ooh, that's quite a few cram cannons there. It's going to make other sea vessels that aren't particularly fast quite unhappy, probably. <laughs> Some props on the back, and then there's this guy, which uh, I thought was pretty neat. It's like a little floating uh, conservatory type thing. It'll, it's actually an airship. It'll pop up out of the water here. Just a minute. I spawned this, uh, you know... You can see where I spawn the spawn stick, and this thing's under the water, so, you know. It is what it is. And there's this little drone guy here. Some missiles. <laughs> and then we have the Kunesian Imperial Enforcement Fleet by the Kunesian Emperor. Which is, uh... Two surface vessels, it looks like, here. Quite a few guns, nice turrets, they look pretty nice. They're pretty good looking ships. Looks like they had uh, some sort of picture there, but uh, I, I apparently don't have the file, so I guess it doesn't show up or something. I don't know, or maybe it'll change once the battle starts. Got some, uh, is that detection stuff? Or no, those are empty ammunition rack things. <laughs> uh, excuse me for the stiffly, I'm still, still a little bit under the water. Under under the water, under the weather. Feeling better, but still a little, you know. So we got an anchor there, that's cool. Laser designator, so they must be, this m probably a missile sub. Missile subs are all the rage. Maybe, maybe not? I guess maybe just torpedoes. Okay, hmm. yeah, well. Whatever it is, we'll find out here in a moment. Go ahead and get uh, the camera in position. Get the clock ready. And we'll get round one underway. <coughs> so you can hear my throat's still a little scratchy. Shells coming in there. Looks like are those uh No, those are APS, never mind. For a second I was Oh! Um Looks like we had some friendly torpedo fire there. Oh, it looks like the uh the ship is having a little trouble getting up out of the water. Shouldn't it's dead up blade powered. But being uh Mobile like that is not going to do it any favors. Where are all those uh, shells going off into the distance like that for? Oh shit. Okay. Sorry about that. Never mind. I thought I, uh, I've been experimenting with tanks and such for Chromoid's uh, tank, tank Wars tournament. And I thought perhaps maybe I'd forgotten to turn it off of 0.7 uh, automatic detection. But I didn't, so it's all good. Missile strike going in. Ooh, big cram strike! Oh! Oh, jeez! Holy crap, that thing went flying! That thing can't be still alive. It looks like it is. Oh, nope, more explosions. Holy crap, that thing went flying. Those crams did a ton of damage. Oh, that one's gonna land. 
not nearly as deadly as that other cram. Oh, there it goes. That cram strike just took out that frontal APS gun. Oh, oh no! <laughs> the advanced cannons are going up like fireworks on the uh, Imperial Kinesian Imperial Enforcement Fleet. Oh, there goes another one. That's got to be it for that ship too. Yeah, 36 percent. Did the iron? It looks like the iron revenant. Was that? Yeah, it is AI dead and despawning. Those crams doing immense amounts of damage to the surface vessels of the Imperial Enforcement Fleet. They're gonna have a hard time doing anything with that submarine, though. I hope they've got. It looks like there are torpedoes in the water. Those are about the only thing that are gonna be able to hurt this thing, probably. Man, those crams just... Boom! You got the, the, uh... Airship over here. It very much looks like a fortress, but it's not actually a fortress. It does move around. Slowly, but it moves around, so it is... Not a fortress. It originally was, and I had to have Bean fix it so that it would move around. <laughs> oh, it lost some propellers, now it's got... Asymmetric thrust, and it's flopping over. Uh, those must be those missiles must be radar guided in because they're radar guided they can't actually uh, lock onto the submarine under the water. Oh, that cram shell got a little close there. I don't think this submarine would do very well taking a hit from crams. Uh, there were torpedoes in the water before, but I don't know if that was a friendly torpedo that just locked onto the wrong thing. Or maybe the torpedo launchers were on uh, this guy over here who has been despawned. So the, uh, whoops, wrong button. The SCE Iron October is the only thing standing from the Imperial Enforcement Fleet, but it is doing, it is doing just fine. It has taken down, uh, shoot, I forget the name of that airship. It has taken that other airship down. This one is in the water and damaged, the Rafflesia. And it doesn't seem like this, uh, the Verona has any weaponry really capable of damaging the Iron October. So it becomes a, a matter of whether or not the Iron October can do enough damage to make up for the loss of its comrades before the time runs out. Those crams, man, that was beautiful. <laughs> you know me, I love crams. Oh, oh, those were so, all oh, those actually hit. Ooh, but the uh, Iron October seems okay. As long as it stays above, uh, above 80%, it should be all right. But the dreaded 80% sinking is the death of many submarines. <laughs> I'm just surprised that those cram cannons actually managed to hit something this far underwater. Oh, it landed again! Oh, it's taking out the missile battery. That's not good for the Iron October. I don't know what other weaponry it has. It has some torpedoes up here in the front. And those will be effective against, uh, the Verona, for sure. And I guess against the, uh, the Rafflesia, too. So long as, uh, it stays in the water. Oh, it's actually a little bit out of range. The Iron October is moving away from it. But it has been battle damaged and shot down. Oh, and it's actually... It looked like it was actually taking torpedo hits there for a moment. 
it, it may be just be running into its own missiles. Now it's moving away, though. Yeah, this is going to be a battle damage caveat situation. The Rafflesia has been damaged to a point that it can't continue uh, maneuvering towards its opponent properly. It is going to get disqualified here if it doesn't fix itself. Air in October down to 86%. This is going to be a close one. <clears throat> yeah, the Rafflesia. Turning, turning off. Sorry, buddy, but you're disqualified. Run over here and uh, blow you up. Robots repairing everything. Oh, screw it. I'm going back to the battle. So we've only got 20 seconds left on the clock. Wasted all that time trying to blow the Rafflesia up. <laughs> it's going to come down to who has the... the, uh block count. Oh, why would you do that? And time is up. But the actual alarm didn't go off. Because my phone was in do not disturb mode. <laughs> oh, sure. Now you do it. <laughs> okay, so the only surviving members the... Oh, the Rafflesia seems to have disappeared. Okay. Well, anyway. Are the Verona and the SCE Iron October. So, Iron October is 20%, and the Verona is 41%, so the Coastal Defense Task Force Juliet had its flagship survive, but let's see, let me open up my calculator here, get two of them open. 41 times point, uh, what's, what's the, uh, 79 times points, oops, 79, 32.39%, that's more than the Iron October is even worth, so, the victory goes to the Coastal Defense Task Force, Juliet, despite it having one of its vessels go out of bounds and get itself disqualified. <laughs> Having your flagship survive when the enemy dies makes a big difference. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and get things reset. Those cram cannon strikes, man, those were beautiful. <laughs> so I've got to hand it to the uh, the Iron October. It uh, it put up quite the fight. It even the playing field a lot before the time ran out. All right. 
Nizine Imperial Enforcement Fleet. There we go. Let's go ahead and get round two underway. Okay, did I hit, miss the button? Oh, no, there it goes. I was say. <laughs> Got some uh, really heavy lag at the start of this battle. Like, really bad. Oh, there's a big explosion on the, the front of the. one of the Keynesian Imperial Enforcement Fleet ships here. I wonder if it took a hit from a, a Sabo shell or something. It wasn't the crams. The crams hadn't arrived yet. They're about to, though. Oh, buddy. No, no big deal, really. Looks like those missiles are explosive based. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Once again, the ship takes that big cram barrage and just goes up. the 4th of July. This is the Iron Revenant. Yeah, that's the flagship. That's uh, down to 65%. That is not what you want to have happen. Oh, the bow of the um, Laputa? Is that it? No, the Iron Tsunami. The Laputa is the, the fortress thingy. Well, not technically a fortress, but the fortress looking thingy. Oh boy, here comes that cram strike. Boom! <laughs> so the Iron October 100%, the Iron Tsunami 67%, the Iron Revenant 63%. So both of the surface vessels of the Imperial Enforcement Fleet are once again badly damaged. This time the uh, the airship here, the uh, not the Laputa, the Rafflesia doing much better. It is in much better condition this time around. It looks like the Iron Revenant is despawning. Yep, there it goes. So that's a flagship kill. Oh, those crams. Oh! <laughs> and that, that's got to be the end of the, uh, yeah, it, it, the Iron Tsunami is despawning as well, leaving only the Iron October to face the entirety of the Coastal Defense Force. Coastal Defense Task Force. Juliet. And then there goes those useless radar guided missiles again. <laughs> I think the uh, the Rafflesia's uh, Sabo guns from firing higher up and at high velocities will be able to hit the Iron October fairly well. I think it may also be dropping torpedoes. Either that or those are more radar-guided missiles that just didn't have a target to lock on. There are some torpedoes in the water, though. Somebody cue the Jaws theme. Um, they're not going for the, the sub, though. Okay. What, do they lock onto the Laputa? No, they're not even going after that. I'm not sure what's going on there. They're in October doing okay so far. Oh, those cram shells. Oh, that was close. 
Oh, it looks like that one uh, detonated because of the timer. Blew off uh, that mast of stuff. Are those shells gonna? Nope, they fell short. Yeah, at this range underwater, cram shells are going to have a very difficult time landing. All those radar guided missiles. At least I'm assuming they're radar guided. That would be the uh, easiest explanation as for why they're not uh, they're not tracking. Because if they were infrared, they'd still detect the air in October. They're not laser, so that kind of narrows the options down. Is the Rafflesia shooting at the... I think the Rafflesia is accidentally shooting the, um, uh, the Verona here. In its attempts to hit the Iron October. Wait, those missiles are... Oh, I thought they were targeting the Laputa there for a second. The Laputa is badly hurt. why these torpedoes aren't tracking though. Are those are those really torpedoes? I'm not sure. It doesn't look like it. Maybe they're maybe the racks are damaged because they're really small. That's why they're not tracking. Oh the Iron October is kinda sitting in a minefield of uh live missiles here, but they're way up on the surface, they probably won't, oh, big explosion there, cram shell must have gotten close, doesn't look like it did any damage though. October has lost its missile strike, <coughs> which I think was its most damaging armament. These, this uh, deck gun of its is uh, not particularly strong. Oh, those crams are actually looking like they're pretty well lined up. One of them was. That is a hit. Didn't do a whole lot of damage though. Oh, those ones landed. Ooh. Secondary explosions going off there. Oh, you can see the AI. It's not AI dead, but it has lost its card there. That was uh, holding the naval AI on. Oh, it is 80% in sinking, I believe, so that is it. <clears throat> With just one minute, just under one minute left on the clock, the Imperial, uh, Kinesian Imperial Enforcement Fleet has been defeated by Ta Coastal Task Force Juliet. Coastal Defense Task Force Juliet by Bean. So congratulations, Bean, you're moving on to round two of the primary. Uh, my condolences, Kinesian Imper, you're, uh, you're going down to the secondary. But yeah, this was a this was a 
a fun battle. I, I love those crams. You know me, I love my cram cannons. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the battlefield.